Look at that. Three of them. You have three cars here. No freaking way. We've scanned this before. Day five, looking for Ralph Brown. We're back on the water over here at Rogers Landing. Now, the reason why we're at Rogers Landing is not because we're necessarily searching here, but yesterday, if you checked out episode number four, Doug and I were up in a plane with Clint. We identified five targets. Now, of those five targets, four of them, we already, you know, pretty much checked off the list late last night. And the reason for it, and I'll throw up some uh, pictures, is uh, one, we have this video of Doug driving around the first location, which was the five ponds, uh, the, the five uh, retention ponds. With that one, as you can see, there's a six foot fence all the way around all of them, checking that one off the list. Second location I went to was kind of the last location that we spotted from the air, and that was five, six, seven retention ponds that had to do with the gravel pit. With that one, in order to get to them, they had no trespassing signs everywhere, in addition to that solid locked gates. No image on that one, but we do have the aerial footage of that one for you here. The uh, third location I went to was over there by the Wheatland Ferry. Again, it was a quarry owned by Knife River, had a nice big gate across the front of it. There was no access into it. And the final and fourth location was down at Chabonneau Lake, is uh, how I think we pronounce that one. There was guardrails on both sides, but really what I was looking for at the ends of the guardrails was, was there any debris, anything that indicated there might have been an accident, but in looking in the water as well, the water was nice and shallow, no place to hide a vehicle. So that checked out four locations for us. That puts us back here at Rogers Landing because late last night as I was driving around after 10, 30, 11 o'clock, I noticed another little side road that I was hoping to get down. But from this picture here, you can see that we had a cable that ran across the road, but it was low enough that I was able to drive the RV and the trailer across it, potentially giving somebody the opportunity, whether it was foul play or it was intentional, or it was, you know, Ralph was just simply lost. He could have made it down this dirt road, putting him in a place of where the bushes were at. With that one, because it is private property, we've decided we're gonna get back on the water this morning, take the boats down to the 219 bridge where we're going to do some sonar work under the bridge but we're also then going to be dropping the drones up into the air searching the lake our fifth location that we had just south of the willamette river on the other side of the 219 bridge as well as that big piece of property so we've got matt and mark who are joining us today as well in the 12 foot boat we appreciate you being here let's go see if we can find ralph today All right, so the location we're at right now is we're down to the 219 bridge is where we're at. Doug just put the drone in the air, and the reason for that is Doug's now gonna head over to the south, Doug, is where we're gonna head first, and we're going over to that fifth location. Check that lake out. Yeah, and we'll show it again from the uh, aerial from the plane yesterday, and here's another uh, Google image as well. What I'm looking for, Doug, when you get over there, the main thing is it looked like it was all private property. So come from the road, make it out to the lake, and there's two potential entry points. Yep. See if it makes any sense, and then come back out to the road also and see if it's gated off or if it's public access. Okay. I'm flying over the farm right now. You can see. Yep. And so with this one here, that one's right over the farm. That's not how you're going to get in. There's another entry point over to the west side yeah. is where it's at. Okay. But we'll fly yeah. down over there above it and then we'll follow the road out. Yeah, that's perfect. See the planes there? So we're gonna be cautious today with the planes yeah. and really not go above the treetops where we're gonna be today. I'm looking at this road and it's hard for you guys to see right now, but uh, Carson will throw it up. Uh, I'm recording the droning and it's it's, it's 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 really private it is 100 percent farmer access only um you have to come through the entire farm itself it's like there's a gate kind of checks off all five locations in from yesterday yeah let me get this turned around and i'll show you guys as best i can right now yeah so it it, it is pretty accessible so here's the road in question and you can see in reference the lake up there. The road I'm really interested in though is the one to the west of that. So if you turn to the right, see that other road that comes in right there across. The okay, let's go down. We're gonna go down to that other one. Because that one would be more private. And, and this is only if you know about the pond mm -hmm. and it's a foul play. It's right there where those vehicles are yeah. stationed right now. So a lot of these farmers have gates across there. Yeah, I mean, you have two of them there. There's two. 
yeah, so you have a gate right there. See that? Yeah. All right, so that one takes that one off. So let's go focus on some sonar underneath this bridge, and then let's really focus on, this is a wooded, bushy area with that private road that goes down here that I saw last night. Sounds good. For those of you who have never seen how sonar works before, we're just going to explain this real quick. Oh, something big is down there already. Uh, anyway, we're going to explain how the sonar works. This one over here is our more of a picture in time. We have a down imaging and we have a side imaging. Uh, first of all, with side imaging, we're casting 75 feet to the left and 75 feet to the right. This black water column here, or the black here that you see is water column. So you have the boat in the middle and then water column down and it's going to match. So it's 25 feet and then you see these grid lines, 18, 36, 54, 75. Uh, those are the grid lines to help you know, gauge what the depth is here. So as this goes up and down, you're going to see this come in and out to get shallower and deeper. For this one over here with the down imaging, same thing, it's got grid lines, so 0, 10, 20, you know, 30 feet and so, so 28 feet, and see that black how it stops there at the bottom of the river, so 27, 28 feet. This one over here is real time, this is live scope, so this is an actual what's happening in real time, so if a fish swims by, you're going to see a fish swim by, whereas over here, picture in time, records what we've already been over. Between the three of them, we're able to triangulate if something is down there, we're going to see it. So this is the 219 bridge. Now normally we don't search underneath bridges when they have guardrails, but one of the things that we've learned is never discredit the unexpected as to what might happen. Now, me personally, I think that Ralph would not be driving that fast, and I don't think that he would have an accident and go over the bridge, and I didn't notice anything on the guardrail, but you just never know. So we're going to search and scan both sides of the bridge here. Then we'll put the drone back up in the air, and we're gonna search that big piece of property on the other side. Right here on screen, what we're looking at is we just went past the uh, bridge pillars and pilings. So we've got the, the uh, part of the bottom of the lake and the river that's been built up on that one. Really, we're not seeing anything much. Something on the up there, it looks like just a rock. And really just more about logs and log jams down here is what we're seeing so far. So far we have scanned this, uh, the upstream side of the river here. We're going to now cross over, scan the other side of it, see if we can find something. If not, then we're going to park ourselves over here, and we're going to start doing our drone search of the big field and the property over there. Yeah, this side's manicured on this side of the bridge. You can tell the farmers pay attention. There, there's no room for anything to be hidden over here. Over there, there's a lot of unkept area near that bridge. When it's, and, and mainly this side too, where that dirt road comes down next to the river on this other side. Right. Like, I might have a car in here. Let me show you why I feel that, Doug. So check this out right here. Okay, now, now keep in mind that my scale is different on here now because I've changed this to 100, 100. feet. Okay, so check okay. that out right there. Oh, the, oh the, that, you okay. know, from, from that, that's 100% a car. Well, of and, a SUV or a van. And then, check this out. That's a real good possibility there. So we'll go hit that at several different angles and I mean, I mean with without having another angle to use reference or the live scan, that definitely looked like a larger vehicle. Yeah. But it doesn't look fresh at all. But I mean it definitely looks buried, definitely looks like it's been down there a while. If it is a vehicle, it's been down there at least 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. Well let's scan it from a few different angles and find out. But what we can do is let's go back to our 75 mode since we know how to read that one really good. So 75 feet left, 75 feet right. And then let's run up and down the river instead of across the river. So maybe back there. Yeah. So we're back up to the pipes now. So it's not here. It wasn't this far up. But you know, maybe back in the day before they put the pump in, somebody could, or even up there, I mean, you could launch the car off of there or even right here, and then the car floats and right into there. I'm not saying it is, I'm just saying possibilities, and I'm not saying this would be Ralph at all. 
said so that car looked older if it was a car. Maybe. Probably just shadows. Uh, it could be a shadow. It could be. You don't know until we hit it from different angles. I mean, when a car pops up, I mean, it's definitely a car. You know what a car looks like. Mm -hmm. Well, when we were going across horizontally, yeah, uh, perpendicular to the bridge there, definitely, or parallel, I mean. This is actually the worst way to scan, by the way. Scanning upstream and downstream is the best way. In fact, scanning upstream is always the best way to scan. Yeah, I mean, we're getting closer to that debris field now, so we can definitely tell that's a debris field. And that's just a ledge for the rocks there. Yeah. So, I mean, everything is becoming a lot clearer now in this direction. And that's why we hit it at different angles, so we can roll it out. We'll go over, uh, we'll keep moving towards the center. Maybe we get the live scan over it, too. Yeah. That, that, that's a lot of what I like doing. When you, when you can get the image on the side scan and then pinpoint it and get right over the top of it with the live scan to just swatch the way the car is just develop inside of the scans, it's pretty amazing. Oh, it's so clear. Yeah. So then you can see over here the sandy bottom of the river in the middle. And this over here is still like some of the, uh, the dirt in the rock and the debris over here. But yeah, I mean, you can definitely tell that's a log there. And you can see it again on down imaging there. All right, well, I'm confident in this one. Yeah, it, it could have been the shadows from those logs, you know? It's at this point, it's definitely not a car. Yeah. All right, let's put the drone in the air and go hit this field right over here. All right, here we go. So with that, Doug, yeah. grab, head up 219 right here. Yeah. And when you head up 219, you're gonna see the dirt road on the right-hand side in the farmer's build. Where you came in last night? Where I came in last night, where that line is down. So then take that and it comes underneath 219 and over into this field. Okay. So let's just let's just kind of show the entire route of it. Okay. But make sure you don't go too high. Stay kind of at the uh, treetop height. Yeah, I'm uh, 223 right now. Because we've got the uh, planes are doing their touch and goes over there. All right. I'm just gonna park you right on the shore. Okay. So I'm gonna feel a little bump here. And the main focus is in this field, along the tree line at the river. Because the farmer himself, he's been down in that field, from what I saw, right? Yeah. He's recently cut the hay. Yeah, so that field's clean. So there on your left is that dirt road mm -hmm. that comes in. Right in there is where. Yeah. And then uh, the, that road is going to make a right. And it comes up to the river here. So, I mean, you really want to focus on that. Just nice and slow through there. Much too to your right. I think you might have something. Like that. And then down here in the back, you know? They're getting into another private property. Yeah, you're doing property over there. There's a house over there. Oh, shoot. There's just nothing else for us to search, Doug. So, Matt just texted me as well. And they have a potential spot down there by the park. And with Ralph, he had some relation to Shampooy Park in the. You know, he was he was big into school and athletics and everything, and they would put on some runs down over by Shampooie Park as well. Okay. Matt says that he found, I, I think he said a, a ramp of some sort. He doesn't believe that as though it looks as though a vehicle has gone in, but you could get a vehicle in there, so we'll just scan that one. And then we also have that other one where the other fishermen were fishing at as we came down. So yeah, we have this spot to search by air, two potential ramps. Okay. And where do we go from there? I hope nowhere else. I hope we solve this one. Yeah. I have no idea where Matt Moss is at. I think this is one location he was just talking to us about. You can actually see some tire tracks coming down that ramp. Normally they would come down and fire up the uh, irrigation. But plenty of room here, Doug, to get off into the water. So let's scan this one and then somewhere. Matt's still down here further, so maybe he spotted a different one that he wants to, to uh, come down. We don't want to rule any of these out. We have this one as well as, again, that one further up river that we passed earlier that the fishermen were asked. We have that one to check. And wherever Matt's at, let's go check that one as well. Okay. So, Doug, 
dug with the uh, water going this direction downstream. If vehicle comes in, it's been 10 weeks, there hasn't been any big storms or anything. I'm gonna put it no more than 50 feet out and no more than 100 feet down, but we'll scan down probably 200 two to 300 yards just to make sure we clear this area. Let me just show you what we're actually seeing here on monitors here. Right now we have a lot of trees and a lot of snags. Uh, this over here, the dark section, is the bank over there. And so we know that we're casting that far off to the right to pick that up. And you can see that we got tree logs here, tree logs here, more tree logs. Nothing showing up on life scope. And nothing big there, so I say this area is clear. Just for kicks though, we're going to uh, head in just a little bit. Give one more pass on here, just in case. And we'll go meet up with Matt. Where are you, Ralph? Where are you? So we made it to Shampooey Park, Doug. need help? Oh, um, maybe just a little bit of gas. A little bit of gas. Yeah. Somebody forgot to put a uh, gas can in here. Hey, who has the newer motor? Which one? Yeah, we're out doing uh, the search for uh, Ralph still. Searching for what? For Ralph Brown. Oh, really? Yeah. Has this car ever been found yet? That's why we're so we're, we just got done checking the uh, the one and only place between here and Sham Shampooey is that uh, where the irrigation pump is at. Other you than, think he drove into the water maybe or? Yeah, I mean his last cell phone pings, off. all right. the last cell phone pings were right here. See, I mean, I was thinking that too. There's two or three private access spots that off the roads don't have gates or anything. I mean, if you drove one of those and he drove into the water, he could be in the car. But I mean, how do we not find the car yet? Yeah. To me, I mean, you gotta, we gotta find the car. Yeah. Find the car, find him. But. All right, we're gonna go check out one more place. Appreciate you checking on us. Not a problem. You said two gallons enough. I got two and a half more if you need Yeah, it. we're just Rogers landing only. Rogers. Okay. Yeah. All Appreciate right. it. Have a good day. You too. That was nice of him. Yeah. Check on us, make sure we weren't uh, scaring it. Yeah. Sorry about that, Doug. We're about uh, 150, 200 yards down from this last location that I want to search right here. If you spin around, you can actually see a kind of a flat ramp. So a vehicle could absolutely cruise off the end of that and end up in the water here. So after that, I don't have any more locations in the water to search for uh, Ralph. I think we've gone above and beyond so far with what we've had to work with, definitely. Well, really, I mean, again, it just comes back to the cell phone ping. I mean, the cell phone ping, based upon previous cases we worked, give me a cell phone ping all day long, I think it's been 100% up until now that we've been able to solve the cases with the cell phone ping. With this one, we've not been able to. You know what's uh, crazy, too, is the uh, PD sheriff that we just got done with. He didn't even have an idea that Ralph yeah. was still missing. Yeah, right. It was almost like it was shocked. Like, I would think and I'm not throwing him or the agency under the bus, but I would think that in the agency it would be a daily reminder of, hey, yes. by the way, we still have Ralph Brown who is missing. Be sure to be on the lookout for a 2014. Right, like a, con a, a constant briefing, you know? A, a, like you said, a reminder. Hey, you know, so you know that this individual is still missing. A little bit from what I gathered, what was said, that he brought up was, I mean, they're, they're pretty much just waiting for his car to show up. Yeah. You know, I, which that's but, the easy part. That's yeah, the easy find, part. Find the car, I bet you're gonna find Ralph. It's not the easy part, but sitting back and waiting isn't gonna get anything done. Yeah, you know, you start off with like something big here, mm -hmm. and it slowly rebuilds itself, and like you're just holding your breath, hoping and waiting. It's like, oh, is that finally gonna be? And then it's like, yeah, it's not a car. Pretty big log. And like this one, as it's rebuilding itself, it's like, oh, that's like that car that's upside down. And it's like, uh, no, it's just another log. Right there. Just off to the left. That's a 
that's a lot older though. I, I don't think it's a fresh car. There's a pile of logs there. How, how deep is it? Uh, 30 feet. Oh. So you see like the old ramp is what you're gonna see here. So this is like the old ramp. And then right on like the left hand side of the old ramp is where we were seeing it. Okay, so here's, here's the old ramp. Okay. okay. Right there. Right there. And, oh, you have two of them here. That one looks fresher, maybe? Look at that. Three of them. You have three cars here. No freaking way. We've scanned this before. On uh, day one. We might have another car here, too. Look, look right up against the edge there. Look at that. Right up against the edge. You can hit an edge right here. You might have another car right here. But I can't quite tell at that angle. On light scope, it looks like it. We just jumped really quick from no cars to three, three cars. to four cars, possibly. Yeah. This isn't easy. You just follow the ramp straight out. Yeah. And it's clear, too. I mean, it's not going to take much to spot them down there. All right, so we're going back into the deep area. So what we'll do is we'll scan it at this direction, upstream, and then we'll come directly into it. Mm -hmm. One, two, I think you have three cars there. And I can't tell if, um, like, that one kind of looks fresher. That one kind of looks fresh, but I can't tell. Straight off of that right there. So let's go into it from the uh, outside in. Did you bring your dive gear? I did. You want to go diving with me? Yeah. yeah. This is day five. Day five, we've been in this area a lot, and all of a sudden, bam, well, we have three possible cars. Oh, you can actually see where the old ramp is. In our target area. Yeah. So we bring it in straight towards shore. Okay, so there's one there. You can see it on live scope. Another one there. That one, that one looks a little fresher. That one. Let me back over that one. That one is fresher. Because you, you could almost see the separation, you know? Yeah. See how it's just sitting on top of the surface and it's not under the surface? Yes. And it's upside down. Wheels up. Those are wheels up, right? Yeah, that's yeah. wheels up. Fresher. Yeah, right? I give you. But it, it's not an older car. That one is not, in my opinion. It's sitting on top. It's not been buried at all. See where the dog is at, laying yes. there on shore? I'm gonna bring you over up on live scope. And you're gonna drop on this side. Well, you might be all right on that side. And, and uh, what's the depth that we're 30, at? 30 feet. 30 feet, yep. Yeah. I brought the 50 foot line just in case. Okay. Are you able to see my magnet on the scanner? I don't see your magnet on this one. Oh yeah, yeah, I see your magnet. So here, there's his magnet going down, Mark. Oh, yeah, okay. So his magnet's at 20 yep, feet. Yep, drop, drop it straight down. We're coming up on a vehicle right now. That's not the one I want you on though. Hold, hold, pull it up a little bit. This is the vehicle I want him on because this is the farthest one out, this upside down. Okay, okay. That seems to be the freshest. All right, drop it down. Down, down, down. You're at 25. You're at 30. We're gonna go down to 35. Drop it right there. Okay, you should you should be on it. I'm gonna take us back over it now. As I bring us back into screen on it, see the wheel upside down. Keep keep your magnet there. I'm gonna bring your magnet back into it. Drop your magnet. You should be hitting it right now. So you need to be more in line with the uh, ramp there. I'm gonna back you up over like all three of them there. See, and this one looks fresher. See how um, the more, more, more of a shiny it is? Okay, yeah, brighter it is. You were right over the top of it right now. Dead center over the top of it. No, no, drop, drop your magnet right there. And just hold it. So see his magnet coming down? Yeah. Okay, now just hold, uh, right, and hold it right there. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it up, bounce it, bounce it, bounce it, bounce it. Should be right down, on right bounce there. it, bounce it, bounce it. And you should be on right now. Keep your magnet there and happy. Bounce your magnet, bounce it. Okay, now you should be bouncing right on it right now. You're so close. Like we have it. Good right over the top of it right now. 15 feet off of it. This is a car. Definitely see it there. Definitely see it there. Yeah, am I bringing it up? It feels like I'm lifting it. <laughs> no. I mean, I see your magnet right on it. 
Yeah, it's on it. You're on it. Yeah. It's 100. It's 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 metallic. You're solid yeah. now. Yep. Okay. Let's go with the other ones. Okay. All right. Awesome. Kind of kind of triangular. Too. Yep. And you can see where we're at. Yeah, you're right over it right now. Okay. Right. Directly over it. Oh, go back. Go back. Go back. Oh, sorry. Yeah. See, and then here's the other car. Oh, okay. Yep. You see how it's not as shiny? Yeah. So it's covered in a bunch more dirt. Yep. Been there a lot longer. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. All right. So we're going to scan it. Double check. And see which one it is. Driving down here with Matt, there's no mistaking that. It's not an accident. That is intentional. Yeah. Looking for Ralph Brown, the, the mayor that's missing. So he's been missing for 10 weeks now in a vehicle. Oh, okay, yeah, the old Yes. Yeah. He's still missing. Yeah, we just found four cars right there. So, four cars. All right. Um, we'll get set up out there and then we'll get the comms, verify that they're working and get to work. All right, sounds good. Head on out and I'll see you at the buoy. And I'll help as soon as I get there. I'm heading down. Good luck, gentlemen. Thanks, sir. Ah, there you are. You got comms on now? You, you, uh, you got ears on me? I have ears on you. Sounds good, sounds good. We're doing it. Let's head on down. 10 4. Have a safe dive, gentlemen. Alright, it's definitely a vehicle that's upside down. However, it definitely looks a lot older at this point. This is not a fresh vehicle. This is a uh, Volkswagen. Uh, and off to my right, definitely an older vehicle as we suspected. Um, not quite sure what it is yet. Okay, so first vehicle is a Volkswagen and it does appear to be an older vehicle. That is correct. Upside down, older vehicle. There's another vehicle, really old, off to my right. Uh, we don't know what kind Volkswagen of Volkswagen is clear. The kind Volkswagen of a weird is shape. clear. It might be like an old rabbit or something. It's definitely an older one. And the uh, other one is a really old, maybe a 60s uh, Pontiac Bonneville, maybe? So uh, the second one, it's looking like it's a 60s model Pontiac. Yeah, I think the uh, Volkswagen is a rabbit or something. All right, and I found the old uh, boat ramp that comes down. So that makes two vehicles I found. I should find at least one more. So at this point, we have two vehicles identified within three minutes. All right, I found the uh, third vehicle. At first glance, it looks like an RX-7. Still not sure what it is, but uh, the vehicle is clear as well, so all three vehicles are clear. Did any of the vehicles have license plates at all? Negative, I don't see any license plates. No license plates on any of them. We're not, we don't have it arranged today to have the towing company come out, but this will be a future mission for us to get these cars pulled out. We'll get a, we'll get a rotator down here and get them all three pulled out. All right, I'm heading uh, downstream just a little bit. I want to go check out that big cliff wall. 10-4. Stay over the top of my bubbles and make sure that you're my uh, dive marker buoy. You are about, I would say, uh, six feet away from the buoy. All right, my goal is to go down river and I want to go catch that big cliff wall. I suspect that there was a vehicle right up against it, but I couldn't tell on sonar. After this being our fifth day out searching, it is really frustrating to, to find three or four targets and dive on them and them not be what we're looking for. 
the only bright side of it is, hey, we know that there's three or four cars here that we can get out of the river that won't be here much longer once we pull them out. But still not what we're looking for. Where is Ralph? That's the question. Where is Ralph? We just don't know. So these are crawdot traps. If you guys want to know, they are required by the state to put their name on them. If they have them out here, so they have an actual number, they're registered. They put them on big long lines like this, drop them in the river. So if you follow this line up here, we'll run into like a whole string of them. All right, so see if I follow the lineup. He even says, leave alone. Do you have eyes on Mark at all? No, because look, here we go. No, your bubbles are way too far apart. Yeah. Okay. Look how far away that other set of bubbles is. Ask, uh, Were you talking to Mark up there? Mark is still right here near the buoy. You, sir, are the wanderer, the searching individual. Here, you way down upstream. Yeah, I went, I went down to that cliff wall, so I'm, I'm coming back up now towards the buoy. Sounds good, yeah, I, I haven't found any other cars, just those three. I was hoping for a fourth down by that wall, but it wasn't. All right, I'm gonna make my way back to the uh, car and uh, release your, your uh, magnet. So I just passed Mark, so my bubbles are closest to the buoy now. All right, and your magnet is not trapped at all, so when you pull the magnet, it's going to be just fine. It'll pull straight up. In fact, you want to pull the magnet right now? 10-4, we'll come get it and pull it up. How you doing under there? I'm doing good. We're going pretty far away from our area. Yeah, I'm kind of going along the ramp and searching along on the uh, upstream side of it. Yeah, you guys right now are about 100 feet upstream. Yeah, I'll be coming back your way in just a minute. But I'll be doing so closer to shore. That brings us to the end of day five. We were hoping to find Ralph. We did find three cars. Unfortunately, none of those were the Nissan Sentra. We're gonna keep this search going. We don't know where next, but we're gonna be there for the family. If there's any other bodies of water that it can be identified, that we can jump in, that are potential locations that uh, Ralph was at. Remember, we're looking for a 2014 dark blue Nissan Sentra. Get out, spread the message, spread the word that Ralph is still missing. You know, we were on the water earlier today and the sheriff didn't even know that Ralph was still missing. Like, and I think that that should kind of be a morning briefing. Just my opinion on that one. Anyway, check your fields, check the neighborhood, continue to spread the message. We appreciate you being here. We'll see See you on the next one later later bye-bye ralph brown the 76 year old former mayor of cornelius he's not been seen since may 16th ralph brown drove off and four days later he still hasn't come home 76 year old ralph brown's been missing for more than a week ralph brown has been missing for eight weeks now looking for a gentleman by the name of uh, ralph brown this is uh ralph brown he went missing on may 16th he's driving a dark blue Nissan Sentra organ plate 319 KQV. I actually received doctored photos with duct tape over it. Like, hey, I have your father, I have your lost loved one. Give me a ransom and I'll, you know, and I'll return them to you. Well, and right now we really don't have, the family's not saying, hey, I have a gut feeling that he's in the water because we don't know. So, you know, does the family have any feelings as to where else we need to look? And they said, you know, maybe we just need to start looking more closer to home. Again, we just have all this cell phone things. Where is Ralph? That's the question. Where is Ralph? We just don't know.